Every now and then, we come across a story with a strange feeling of incompleteness, leaving us unfulfilled. It forces our brains to fill in the gaps until we get some sort of satisfaction. This mystery has been puzzling the police, journalists and keyboard detectives for the past 13 years. A body is discovered on a quiet beach in County Sligo, Ireland. The male body was discovered only wearing underwear, his clothes neatly folded nearby. He clearly went for a swim during the night and drowned. He was then washed back ashore for a passerby to find. Well, if it were that easy, it wouldn't still be a mystery, right? And I certainly wouldn't be making this video. This case is very similar to that of the famous Somerton Man case. If you're unfamiliar with that case, I have already covered it in a previous video, for which I'll leave a wee link in the description below. Hi folks, I'm Johnny and welcome to The Oddest. Let's you and me take a wee look at the man who never was and ask the question, who was Peter Bergman? In the early morning of Tuesday the 16th of June 2009, Arthur and his son Brian pulled into the car park at Rossies Point Beach in County Sligo, Ireland. They were there for a specific reason, Brian was a triathlete and was training hard for an upcoming event. It was around 6am and the tide was still out. As the morning fog was clearing, Arthur noticed a strange object lying on the sand not too far away from the slipway. The closer he got, the more apparent it became. He was looking at a man lying face down in the sand. He immediately called on his son who was getting ready to enter the water. Arthur noticed two things straight off the bat. First, it was clear that the man was deceased. He leant forward and touched the man's ankle. He would later say that it was as cold as marble. Secondly, he shrewdly observed that there were no footprints around the body, which would lead him and Brian to the reasonable assumption that the unknown man had been washed ashore. Around four miles from Rossies Point Beach, Sergeant Terry McMahon had not long been booked on duty at the Sligo Police Station. In Ireland, the police there are called Garda, meaning guardians. He was 45 minutes into his shift when the call came in from Arthur Kinsella about the gruesome discovery on the beach. Thinking ahead, the sergeant sent a patrol car to the beach and he went to the storeroom to retrieve a large tarpaulin plastic sheet that he knew he would need. He was about to be dealing with a death in a public space and he knew that he would need to cover the body whilst he carried out initial investigations at the scene. Upon the sergeant's arrival at the location, his officers were already there taking statements from the Kinsellas. He approached the body and would later state that it was obvious that he was dead. He was a grey-haired male and it didn't look like he had been in the water for that long. He noted that the unknown man was oddly dressed for a swim in the ocean. He was wearing purple speedo trunks with his underwear still on over the top. He was also wearing a navy t-shirt which was tucked in to his underwear. This already seemed bizarre, but unknown to Sergeant McMahon at this time. This was only the first in a long list of puzzles linked to this case. Four days earlier, so on Friday the 12th of June, a man was spotted at Ulster Bus Depot sometime between 1430 and 1600. This man fit the description of the stranger on the beach. He was described as being in his late 50s or early 60s. He was 5 foot 10 inches tall and had blue eyes and grey hair. There he boarded a bus for Sligo. He was carrying a black shoulder bag similar to a satchel or laptop bag and a standard carry-on luggage bag. At 18.28 that night the bus arrived in Sligo and the man got a taxi to the Sligo City Hotel. He arrived with no reservation and he requested a room for three nights. He paid in cash and he gave his name as Peter Bergman. In the address section of the form, he wrote In Stettern 15 4472 Vienna, Austria. He did not present a passport or any other documentation to prove his identity. The hotel staff would later say that he would attend breakfast each morning at 8.30am. He was clean-shaven, polite and well-groomed. He also spoke with a German accent. Each morning after breakfast, he would return to his room for a short time before leaving the hotel for the day. Each time he left the hotel, he was holding a purple plastic bag, which seemed to be full. 
To this day, investigators are unable to ascertain what the bag contained. This was because each day he returned to the hotel, he wouldn't have the bag. Well, at least the bag was not visible. And no, before you make any jokes about invisible bags, I meant that upon his return, he may well have just had the empty bag in his pocket. No fewer than 13 times he left the hotel clutching a full plastic bag, and 13 times he returned without it. Not one single piece of footage showed him disposing of any contents or meeting anyone. 13 times over. He's actually never seen talking to anyone. He never used a mobile phone, payphone, or stopped to speak to anyone outside of the normal transactional conversations with hotel staff and taxi drivers. His movements around Sligo were well covered by CCTV. However, police were unable to work out what happened to the mystery contents of this purple bag each day. It was almost as if he knew where to go to avoid the cameras picking up this information. But why go to such lengths? What was the reason? It was clear from early on that he did not want his identity known. The address the gentleman provided at the hotel was also checked out by police via the Austrian authorities. They confirmed that the address does not exist and that postcodes in Vienna all start with the number one, not the number four. Passport records were checked for a man fitting his description, going by the name of Peter Bergman. It was discovered that there were no passports issued anywhere in mainland Europe, America or South America with these details. In fact, there was no record of any kind in any of those locations of a Peter Bergman. He simply didn't exist. The following day, he was seen entering the local post office where he purchased eight stamps and airmail stickers. It would be reasonable to assume that he had some letters to write. However, police yet again were puzzled as they were unable to discover who he was writing to, where the letters were sent, or even when he mailed them. The only thing we know about this is that there were no stamps or airmail tags discovered in his possession or in his hotel room. There was CCTV inside and outside of the post office, so when police attended the post office to retain the CCTV footage, which was downloaded onto a USB drive, here is what the investigating detective had to say about it. We got the CCTV footage from the post office, and when we went to look at it, it was downloaded by a staff member for some strange technological reason. The footage hadn't actually gone onto the USB stick, and when we went back to the post office, it was gone off their system. One of the hotel managers would later tell investigators that a housekeeper reported to her that she was unable to gain entry into Bergman's room to clean it and change the towels one morning. This prompted the manager to go to the room and use the spare or master key to open the door. She said that Bergman was in his room and was startled when she entered, but his demeanour quickly shifted from startled to relieved once he saw that she was hotel staff. It's believed that he was maybe expecting someone else to walk through the door. On the Sunday morning, he once again left the hotel and entered a taxi. He asked the taxi driver where would be a nice quiet spot on the beach to go for a swim. The taxi driver told him that Rossi's Point Beach would be the best place as it's much quieter than the others. He got out of the taxi at Rossi's Point where he stood for a few moments, taking in his surroundings. He then got back into the taxi and returned to Sligo. Going back for a moment to the purple plastic bag, investigators combed through the CCTV. They systematically searched every public bin, spoke with shopkeepers, looked in car parks, and even sent officers to scour the garbage dumps in the hopes of finding a tiny clue as to the man's true identity. But nothing would be found. The detective assigned to the case believed that this was all planned, that for some reason, he did not want the disposal of these items to ever be discovered. After breakfast in the hotel, he approached the front desk to request a later checkout that day, which he was granted. It was reported that he also made mention that he had some errands to run that morning. He then returned to his room before exiting the hotel, clutching a full purple plastic bag. Later that morning, he would return to the hotel, as so many times before, carrying nothing. Shortly after 1pm, he left the hotel after checking out. In his possession are the two bags that he came with, a laptop style bag slung over his shoulder, a dark coloured hold all type bag and yet another full purple plastic bag. 
He made his way on foot along Key Street and Wine Street, where he stopped at the Quayside Shopping Centre. However, he didn't go inside, but instead he just hovered around the main door for a few moments, before returning back onto Wine Street, where he continued his journey to the Sligo bus station. However, once he arrived at the bus station, it would appear as though he had managed to discard the dark coloured hold all that he was carrying upon leaving the hotel. Once at the bus station, he entered the wee coffee shop there and he ordered a cappuccino and a sandwich. He appeared to take out a few bits of paper from his pocket which he was seen writing notes on. Then, a few moments later, he would rip up these notes and threw them in the bin. He boarded a bus bound for Rossi's Point. This left the bus station on schedule at 14.20. The bus driver asked him if he would like a return ticket, to which he replied no, and instead asked for a one-way ticket. Approximately 16 people would witness Bergman on the beach that Monday afternoon. They would describe him as sticking out because, well, he was dressed in dark clothing. He had his trousers rolled up to his knees and was barefoot. They said he looked out of place. There he would continue to walk up and down the length of the beach for most of the day and well into the night. It was the next morning that Arthur and Brian Kinsella would discover Peter. After Arthur contacted the police, he and his son would say a prayer over the unknown man. So, remember I said at the start of the video that he was found wearing a navy t-shirt, speedo swimming trunks, and on top of that he wore dark underwear. Another puzzling fact that's very similar to that of the Somerton man was that all of the labels on his clothes had been cut off. It became clear to investigators that the man who called himself Peter Bergman had meticulously planned his final days in Sligo. He picked the perfect spot and after a few hours walking on the beach he simply turned and walked out towards the horizon on his own terms. After having drowned in the ocean, the waves would return him back to the beach where he would be discovered the next morning. Well, it wasn't really that straightforward, because after an autopsy was carried out, the forensic pathologist reported that although there was no foul play involved, the man didn't drown. In fact, there was no salt water in his lungs at all. The coroner actually declared the cause of death as heart failure. It was only after this thorough examination was it also discovered that Mr Bergman had cancer. In fact, he was so riddled with the disease and after a toxicology report, it was discovered that there was no evidence of any pain medication ever having been consumed. There was no evidence of painkillers or chemotherapy. Medical professionals would estimate that he had only weeks to live. This, of course, would explain his actions over the past few days. This is a wee bit haunting when you go back over the CCTV and see the man tracing steps across Sligo. He was playing out the final days of his life. I think his intention was to be taken by the ocean and he never wanted to be found. The police carried out months of extensive investigations, utilising media outlets nationally and internationally. They took DNA samples and fingerprints which were run through every conceivable database and yet he didn't show up in any of them at all. It's therefore abundantly clear that Peter Bergman does not exist and it's very unlikely that he ever did. I don't know how many people will see this video. It may be a hundred. In time, maybe a thousand. Who knows? If you're watching this right now, tell someone you love them. Reach out. Say hi to an old friend. Heck, say hi to a stranger. Smile every day to at least one person. It'll make them feel good and will make you feel great. Right, off you go. Have a wee cup of tea. But listen, I'll be seeing you soon in the next video.